Hey guys, this is T from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome to Learning RPG Maker MZ The Basics. Today we'll be covering how to make a map in RPG Maker MZ. So I have a new project open and a blank map and we're going to start to learn how to map with this project. So to start, we'll go over to this left pane over here and this shows your existing maps. We're going to use the starter map, which is called Map 2, because I actually already had a map already and I deleted it. But anyways, if we wanted to start a new map, we could right click T's Tutorials and select New and load a new map in on this pane. But we're just going to use this Map 2 and change the options. So select it and hit your spacebar or right click and select Edit and that will open the map properties window. So we're gonna go over the map properties and the first thing we'll touch on is the name and the display name. So the name is more for you than anyone else because you're gonna see it while you're developing your game and that's how you're gonna find each map that you're making. I'm gonna name this map tutorial map number one. The display name though is the name that pops up on the edge of the screen when your character or your player walks into the map that you're on or when they're transferred onto the map that you're on. So today we're going to make like an epic shop. So we're going to call this map the best shop ever. Okay, so the next thing we want to look at is the tile set. This is where we decide which tile set we're going to use to build our map. Right now it's set on overworld, but we're going to make a shop, so we need to change that. We have Overworld, Outside, Inside, Dungeon, Sci-Fi Outside, and Sci-Fi Inside by default. Today we're going to choose the third tile set called Inside. Now we have to size our map, and we have a width and a height. The width and the height are based not on pixels, but on tile size, and each tile is 48 by 48 pixels. So it's 48 pixels wide and 48 pixels tall. The default map setting is 17 tiles by 13 tiles. Now I have a specific size that I want my map for a specific reason, and I'll explain that in a minute. So for this map, I've decided I'm going to use 15 tiles wide by 18 tiles tall. And the reason for that is my actual map, the viewable map, is going to be 10 tiles high, but I'm adding four tiles on the top and four tiles on the bottom so that when I create a dialog box, I could put it either on the top of the screen or the bottom of the screen and it'll look really nice. That's a personal preference, but if you would like it to look that way, that's what you would do. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the scroll type. Now you can have a map that the player can go to the edge to and the screen will just stop. That's the no loop option. But you have a few more options here. They're called loop vertically, loop horizontally, or loop both. Now if you have it looping vertically, if they walk toward the top edge of the map, it will automatically loop to the bottom edge of the map. Horizontally, if you walk to the right edge of the map, it'll automatically loop to the left edge of the map, and then loop both will do both. I want to also touch on parallax background, because you'll see down here it also says loop, but this is a little bit different. So say we wanted to add a parallax to our map, and a parallax is just an image that lays on the bottom layer or underneath the bottom layer of the map. And this can be used for several different things. Say you want to build a bridge, and you want a mountainside in the back of the bridge. You would use a parallax image combined with tiles for your bridge. So let's check this out. We're just going to pick the blue sky parallax for our example, and if I wanted this to loop horizontally, what this does is it takes the blue sky image and it places it side by side horizontally so that no matter how far you walk on the map, you'll still see the sky even though the actual image file isn't quite that wide. Now say you want your blue sky and your clouds to scroll across the map so it looks like they're moving. Here you would change the scroll option. So if I wanted my clouds to go to the right, I could set it to negative one. You could change this number if you'd like and that corresponds with the scrolling speed. So negative one will make the clouds scroll to the right and one would make the clouds scroll to the left. Now say you want to scroll your map vertically. You could do that by clicking this button and changing your scroll from either negative one, which will make it scroll down, or you could put in one and that will make your map scroll up. You can also make your map scroll diagonally if you put a number in each one of these. So if I put negative one and negative one for horizontal and vertical, the map is going to scroll down and to the right diagonally. If you check show in editor, you can see your parallax in your editor, although it may look different than it does in the game, so definitely check it in game as well. Now let's remove this because we're not going to need it. The next thing that we'll talk about is the autoplay background music or BGM and the autoplay background sound. So this is where you set music or sound for your map that will play as soon as you enter the map. You don't have to apply it with an event and it will play every time you enter the map. 
so let's set some autoplay background music for this map. I actually played around with it a little bit and found something that I liked and I thought I'd show you guys, but I'll turn it right back off so it's not too loud for you to hear me. Go ahead and pick a file and hit play to preview what it sounds like. I was playing around with this and I decided to take this one and bring the pitch all the way down to 50. And then I decided to add some background sound too because it's also uh, a shop. So there's gonna be people in the shop. So I decided to put some people in the shop. I'm gonna play that as well. And I turned that pitch down to 60 and the volume down to 35. And I thought that sounded pretty cool. So that's what I went with with my map. But of course, this is a preference. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna turn that off so that I, you guys can hear me. <laughs> and another thing we have down here is a little button called Disable Dashing. And this will work only in specific cases where you don't want your player to be able to move around too fast. If you click Disable Dashing, whether or not they have Auto Dash on in their options, or if they're holding Shift, they won't be able to dash on your map. And then this note box is used for plugins. So if you are not using a plugin, you won't be using the note box. And if you are going to use it for a plugin, it should have an explanation on what to do inside the help file. The last thing we'll go over is enemy encounters on a map. So for your enemy encounters, you're going to want to specify a battle back because if you don't, it'll just show a fuzzy image of the map and that's not fun. So we're gonna try and find a, a battle back that looks kind of like a shop. Here we go. This looks enough like a shop. So this will be our battle back. In order to determine how many enemies your player will encounter when they're on your map, you can use encounter steps. This is by no means the only way to attack your players on a map, but this is a simple way to do it from the map settings. It's set to 30 steps by default, and that means that it's roughly 30 steps before they should get into another encounter. If you'd like to add encounters to your map, you go to this troop section and double click on an empty line. Then the encounter options window pops up and you get to choose which troop you want to show up on your map. The weight determines the probability of your player encountering this specific troop in relation to the other troops that you have on the map. If you only have one troop on the map, then this is irrelevant. You can also decide whether or not the troops are encounterable throughout the entire map, or you can specify regions. So say you wanted it in two separate regions of the map, you could put in here two, and you could put in here four, or whatever other region that you're trying to specify. So we're not gonna actually have encounters on our map though, because I think probably having encounters in a um, department store is not a good idea. Now it's time to actually build our map. And the first thing that I like to do is paint the back black in order to give it a good canvas to build your map on and when the player is playing it in game it looks really nice so we're going to use this tool the flood fill tool and paint the entire layer black i'm going to also go over these tools with you a little bit this is the map mode and you have to be clicked on to this mode in order to use these other tools that are used for mapping and to have access to the tile set on this left pane if you're clicked on the event mode, you will instead have access to a list of events. We don't have any events, so you don't see anything here. So let's click onto the map mode, and this pencil tool will make it so that we can put single tiles down. If you click once, you'll get a single tile. You can also hold your mouse down and drag and get several tiles. If you don't like what you put down, you can also use Ctrl Z to get rid of your changes. So the next tool we're gonna look at is the rectangle tool. And say I wanna make a rectangular section of rug and I don't wanna have to do it with the pencil tool one tile at a time. You just select the rectangular tool, click in whatever corner you'd like in your rectangle and drag it out. And there we go, we have a carpet. It also has an eclipse tool. So say you wanna make a floor or an area that's more circular in nature you can also click whatever corner of the area that you wish and drag out a more circular shape. And then last is the flood tool, which we already used, but you can click on any part of the map and it will fill in that section of the map with whatever tile you currently have selected. And lastly, I'll put another tile up here to show this, we have a shader tool. You'll see that when you use auto tiles, it automatically shades specific sections of the map. But if you'd like to shade more, you can click this tool and you can add shade wherever you want it and you can also remove it wherever you want it. Just click where the shade is and it will be removed or click where it isn't and it will be added. Okay, so now we get to build the map. 
the first thing that I'm going to do is put down a ceiling tile. But actually, before that, I'm going to choose what layer I'm going to build on because the exciting thing about MZ is that it has layers. Yay! You can choose to use automatic and as you can see here, that's the default. But for this tutorial, we're going to use the layering system. So we're going to start on layer one. This is the ceiling tile that I'm going to start. We're going to go four tiles down from the top. One, two, three, four. Okay, now that we have the ceiling tiles in, I've noticed that this map, the viewpoint's kind of a little small. So another cool feature for mapping on MZ is that you can zoom and make your map bigger or smaller. And if you want it to be the size that it will be in your game, you can make it a one-to-one -one ratio with one click. So I'm gonna make it a little bigger so it's easier to see. The next thing we'll do is add walls to our shop and I'm going to grab the tile directly beneath the ceiling tile that I chose and put walls two tiles high underneath. Okay, now that we have the walls, we need a floor. And I decided I want to go with this pink carpet. It looks cute. Now the reason I'm not using the fill tool here is because the doorway is open and if I did it would color the entire black section. So this is what we have for layer one. We're going to switch to layer two now in order to put down furniture and decorations on the wall and things like that. Another thing that I would like to point out to you is that we have four tiles up here. This tile, this one, this one, and this one. They're called counter tiles. You can use these as a counter between an NPC, like an innkeeper or a shop owner, and yourself. And you can interact with the innkeeper or shop owner on the other side of the counter. Not all the tiles behave this way, it's just these four. So we're gonna have like a nice white table counter thing going on. Let's set up some more tables. We need tables to display our items. And let's get this shop filled up with stuff. There's a lot of stuff in shops, so you can just put, put stuff down. Okay, I think our shop looks pretty good. Maybe, maybe we could put a little, yeah, put a little picture in there, make it pretty. Okay, so now that we're done with layer two, we can build on that by switching to layer three. So all the tables that we made and the counter that we made, we can put some stuff on top of there. Okay, we got lots of cool stuff on layer three. Now we can add just a little bit more with layer four. Because we're on a layer on top, we can now put inkwell on top of our letters. And this jar will appear in front of the bag. Now I wanna show you something real quick. If I were to try and put this on layer three, it would remove the bag. So instead, we're gonna put it a layer above and it will show up in front of the bag. So this is our shop. If we wanna check it out, move to your event layer, start your character starting position at the doorway and go ahead and give it a test drive. Isn't it so beautiful? Okay, now that we're done building our map, there's a couple more things that I would like to mention to you. One of those being that when you're in the map section, I'm sure you notice that we have an A, B, C, and an R tab. Now the A, B, and C are separate tile set tabs, and some of them have different behaviors and characteristics. The A tab has what's called auto tiles. I'm sure you noticed that when I was putting certain tiles down from this tab, they kind of draw automatically on each other depending on what they're next to. You notice that if they're not next to anything on the top, you see, you see an edge here on the top, but you don't see it on the bottom or the sides. That's the auto tiling behavior. We want to play around with these and see exactly how they work. Some of them are even animated. You'll see that in game. In fact, let's take a look at some. I'm going to put this up here and do another play test just to see this animated water.
you see the water's moving. You won't see that in your editor, but when you play test it, it's, it's easy to see. So another thing that I wanted to mention is that you have this transparent tile here, and this is used to erase things. If you want to erase something on a specific layer, you're going to want to go to this layer and erase it from that layer. As you can see, I'm erasing things from layer 3. But if I try and erase things from other layers, it's not, it's not going to do anything. Another little tip I want to share with you guys is how to delete with the transparent tiles on tab A and tab B. So if you want to delete tab A auto tiles or anything found on tab A, you would select this transparent tile, go to the layer in which the image resides. Let's see here. We could delete some of these ceiling tiles and that will delete both the image and the collision. Now if you go and you if you use this transparent if you use this transparent tile and delete something from tab B or C or C let's go to a layer with some of that stuff on it you'll delete the image but you won't delete the collision so in order to delete both the image and the collision for for images found on B or C you'll want to use this transparent tab instead Another thing that I wanted to point out is that you can copy and paste sections of the map by right clicking and selecting. Right now we're on automatic, so if I right click and select, I can copy and paste the entire map. As you can see, it moved everything. But say you just want to move something on a specific layer. Well, let's go to layer four, and we're just going to move things on layer four. So you can see the bottle and the inkwell are the only things that moved because they're the only things on layer four. And then another thing that I also want to go over is something called shift mapping. So in order to go over the shift mapping, we're going to go to layer one where we drew our carpet and we're going to change our carpet. Say you finished your entire map and you just, you don't like it anymore. You decided you want a different carpet. Uh, before we had the layer options, you would have to delete everything above the carpet. Just like as if you, you, like you had this and you're deleting everything. Not on layer one, everything. <laughs> But now, because we have layers, you can choose the layer that the carpet is on and replace it, and it doesn't delete what you've built above it, which is just phenomenal. It's beautiful. But we're also going to learn something else about this, because you'll notice that the perspective is it's a little funny here. You shouldn't be able to see the edge of the carpet on this wall in this top-down layer. So we're going to do something called shift mapping. And what you do is you take a section of the map that you want, press down shift, and right click and that copies it to the clipboard. Now if you want to put this anywhere you continue to hold down shift and you left click. And you'll see that it put down the, the tile that I grabbed in the place where I clicked. So again you hold down shift, you right click to copy and you keep holding down shift and you left click to place. Now you'll notice after doing this it still looks a little funny, it's not quite right. So we're going to copy this section and we're going to paste it here. We're going to copy this section and paste it here. And now it's beautiful and we changed our carpet without having to erase everything. I missed a couple. Let me get these. Alright, now our map is beautiful. Let's look at it. Okay, so there it is, the basics of MV mapping. I guess I'll show you one last thing since I mentioned it. Let's go ahead and make a shopkeeper real quick. This will be explained more in depth in a, another tutorial. Okay, you can see it's just, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Well, here we go. We got our awesome map. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, definitely give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Stay tuned for more. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.